Good morning children. Today we shall learn about plant reproduction. The new plant generally grows from a seed. But have you wondered how? As we know, the flower turns into a fruit. Now we also know the insects help in the pollination that is transferring of pollen grains from the anther part of the male organ which is stamen to the stigma part of the female organ which is pistil or the carpel. You know if the pollen grains are transferred to the stigma of the same flower it is called self pollination. And when the pollens are transferred from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower of the same kind, it is called cross pollination. As we saw, the pollination happens due to the external agents such as a bee, which is an insect, other than insects, wind, water also help in the pollination. Hence, all of these are called the agents of pollination. The insects visit the flowers for nectar and transfer the pollens to the stigma. Generally, the insect pollinated flowers are brightly colored, have sweet smell. They are also rich in nectar. Some plants have small flowers and the petals are not brightly colored. They do not produce nectar. The pollen grains are very light in weight and hence easily blown away by the wind. So the wind is the agent of pollination. For example, in the case of wheat, maize, rice, etc. In certain aquatic plants like the seagrass, the pollination is carried out by the water as the water current slowly carries the pollen grains to the other flowers. You know, even few small birds like the sunbird or the hummingbirds which have smaller beaks pollinate the flowers. Few bats and rodents also pollinate the flowers. Now let us see what exactly happens after the pollination. As we saw, after the pollination, the ovary swells up, turns into the fruit and the ovule inside the ovary turns into the seed. The new plant develops from the embryo inside the seed. This embryo develops from a single cell zygote. The zygote develops into the embryo, then embryo develops into the baby plant. So all starts from a single cell zygote. Let us see how the zygote is formed starting from the beginning. A bee came and dropped the pollen grain in the stigma. Hence the pollination is done. For the pollination the pollen grains need to be transferred to the stigma. But why? The pollen grains consist of one kind of gamete cell and another kind of gamete resides inside the ovules. If the pollen lands on the stigma of the right type of flower, the stigma secretes some nutrients. The pollen grain absorbs these and starts growing. A thin tube grows out of the pollen grain. The tube keeps growing carrying the male gamete and it grows until it reaches the ovary. The tube reaches the ovary and then it enters inside an ovule and releases the male gamete inside it. Then the male gamete and the female gamete fuse together to form zygote. So when two different types of gamete cell fuse, the zygote is formed and this zygote grows into an embryo. As the pollen grain comes from the male part of the flower, it consists of the male gamete and the ovule consists of the female gamete. This process of fusion of male gamete and the female gamete to form a zygote is called the fertilization. The zygote is formed due to the fertilization. 
then the zygote develops into an embryo then embryo into the baby plant this type of plant reproduction process is called the sexual reproduction so in the sexual reproduction of plants the gametes participate and the zygote is formed after the fusion of male and female gametes you know in certain plants for example the hibiscus plant the same flower has both the male and the female gametes hence the flower is called the bisexual flower or the complete flower while in other plants for example pumpkin corn papaya etc the flower has either the male gamete or the female gamete hence the flower is called the unisexual flower or the incomplete flower so this is how plants reproduce through the seeds that's all for now bye bye children